Okay, we go now to another chapter, which is Uniform Circular Motion. We are referencing University Physics Calculus Base by Survey and Jivet. Creator, Sir R Squared. Disclaimer, this video is made as an instructional medium for college physics students. This video may serve as reference for the students and instructors as well. This video is not for sale and can be downloaded for free at www.youtube.com. This video is not regulated by the institution. Any use of this video other than its purpose is at viewers' responsibility. Learning Objectives At the end of this lecture, students will be able to understand the concepts and the underlying principles of uniform circular motion. Understand the behavior of the forces while undergoing circular motion. Learn centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. A student will be able to learn centrifugal force. Know the formulas involved in uniform circular motion. Solve problems involving circular motion and apply it to our daily life. Okay, let us talk about uniform circular motion. First, we have we try to understand uh, how this thing works. And so, for example, we have a circle. Okay, we have a circle here. And of course, we will be having the radius, okay, R. Now, suppose that we are having an object that is initially here. And uh, it is said that the velocity of this object is always tangent to the circle. For example, for a given time t, after some time, your object is here. Then the velocity is said to be tangent to this uh, circle. That will be the final velocity, for example, from here to here. And of course, the radius will also be r. And this one is the angle theta. Now, we are having from here to here, that is actually the delta r. Now, if we're trying to, uh, if we try to illustrate this velocity, d sub 1 going in that direction, and then also say that is b sub 1 and then we have b sub f going in this direction okay remember uh, here in uniform circular motion uh, we are dealing with constant speed okay, let us try to uh, take note of that we are dealing with speed is constant but the velocity changes from time to time. No? Remember, speed is different from velocity. Okay, so let us try to take note of that. So uh, the speed is constant, but the velocity changes. Velocity kasi, vector quantity, yung speed, that is a scalar quantity, magnitude lang, ano? So, yung magnitude niya constant, but yung direction is changing. Okay. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng uh, dito sa circular, uniform circular motion. The direction is changing, therefore the velocity is changing, but the magnitude is the same. Therefore, if they have the same magnitude, if this is B sub 1 and this is B sub F, B sub 1 is equal to B sub F in that will be in magnitude so we can either call this as b then of course uh, from here to here we will have the change in velocity okay do not confuse yourself about this one this is not the resultant the change in velocity is not the resultant but the resultant of b1 and the change in velocity is the final velocity Ibig sabihin, if this is the origin, 
and then from tail from tip to tail and then we will have that so ang ibig sabihin natin b sub 1 plus the change in velocity is equal to b sub f okay or we can say that delta b or the change in velocity is equal to b sub f minus b sub 1 so we have illustrated this and uh, remember this uh, e sub i here, which is the uh, velocity, eh, meron tayong tinatawag na centripetal force. Ano? Yung centripetal force is uh, center seeking. It is always acting towards the center. So, baguhin natin yung uh, kulay. May centripetal force siya na pa ganyan, okay? and centripetal force na pag -anon. Okay, going to the center. Along the path, mayroong centripetal force na always going to the center. O ngayon, ito raw uh, velocity will always acting a tangent to the edge of the circle. There, therefore, it will be making 90 degrees to with this R and the centripetal force. Tandaan natin yung centripetal is uh, center seeking towards the center. And yung centripetal uh, towards the outside of the circle. Okay. Now, if this is 90 degrees with the radius, therefore, if this is theta, this is also equal to theta here. Okay. Now, if we try to draw this, uh, let's try to draw this. Uh, triangle here we have here r okay we have here r and then we have here as delta r delta r and then we have the here as theta remember this theta here is equal to that theta there therefore we are having similar triangles. This triangle is similar to this one. This one is an isosceles triangle because the uh, value or the magnitude of velocity is equal but they are just different in direction. In this case, this is also an isosceles triangle because this one uh, R here is equal to the R. Okay, two sides are equal. So we say by similar triangles, we can say that delta B Delta B over, can call this B, over B is equal to delta R divided by R. Okay. So therefore, delta B can be written as B over R multiplied by delta R. Okay, I have created some space. So we are left with uh, delta B is equal to B over R multiplied by delta R. Now, if we want to get the uh, centripetal uh, acceleration, A sub C, centripetal acceleration, will be equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Okay, but the change in velocity is equal to this one. So, therefore, we can say that, uh, let us arrange this one first. Ayusin natin to. Okay. So, we have change in velocity over the change in time. The change in velocity is equal to P over R multiplied by delta R. And that will be all over delta t. So, yun yung uh, sinasabi ng ating equation. Ngayon, uh, let us try to illustrate. For example, we have this circle and we have a relatively small uh, central angle. For very, very small central angle, delta r over delta t will just be equal to b. 
as we can uh, see here in this figure. Therefore, substituting values, the centripetal acceleration is equal to V over R multiplied by V. Therefore, A sub C is equal to V squared over R. Okay. Wherein uh, A sub C is equal to the centripetal acceleration. A sub C is in uh, meter per second squared. And B is in meter per second. And R is the radius, which is in meters. Okay. This one is the centripetal acceleration. So there you have it. Uh, the derivation of the formula for the centripetal acceleration. Okay, let us try to continue and we shall, we shall erase some space here. But knowing that uh, this, is our, this is our centripetal acceleration, let us talk about the centripetal force. Okay, the centripetal force is the force that is directing towards the center of the uh, circle. So this one is the centripetal F sub C is equal to mass times the acceleration. But this is centripetal force. The acceleration must also be centripetal. Therefore, the centripetal force is, is equal to the mass of the object times uh, the uh, centripetal acceleration, which is equivalent to this one we can say that is B squared over R, okay. wherein M is in kilograms, that is the mass, F is in, of course it will be in Newton parent, uh, B is in meter per seconds, and R is in meters. Okay, so this one is our formula for centripetal force. So these are just the key takeaways uh, for, uh, for the subject matter. And of course, I'm going to the delta B. Delta B. Delta B is equal to B over R. B over R multiplied by delta R. That comes from the similar triangle, the associated triangle that we have derived earlier. So therefore, uh, these are the key takeaways uh, for this subject matter. Tandaan lang natin that uh, this uh, velocity is always acting perpendicular to this uh, uh, edge of the uh, circle. And R is the radius of the circle, the centripetal uh, Acceleration is directed toward the center of the circle as well as the centripetal force and theta is the central angle of the circle. Okay, so these are the key uh, takeaways of our uh, subject matter. Now, if we want to uh, compute for the, uh, for the time, it will take for one complete revolution here. So, uh, we say that velocity, velocity is simply equal to the displacement over time or the distance over time. But what is the distance in this case? That is just the circumference of the circle that will be 2 pi r. Okay. So that is 2 pi r over t. Now, if we, would, if we will be working in this equation, let us go here, down here. So, we will be having a formula that is equal to t is equal to 2 pi r over b if we uh, interchange uh, b and t. Upon having it, we will be having here b is equal to 2 pi r over t. And if we want to get the uh, 
centripetal acceleration that will be if we try we will be substituting this value here that will be 2 pi and then we have r over t and then we over r pataya sa baba all over r and this will be squared i am substituting this one to here okay so therefore we will be having 4 pi squared 4 pi squared r squared but may r sub above it will be r over t squared take note that the 1 r will be cancelled with the denominator therefore this will be your uh, final uh, equation if you want to get the uh, acceleration for one whole uh, revolution okay 4 pi squared r squared over t squared okay now the time for uh, one whole revolution will be equal to 2 pi r over v so these are the key take takeaways for this uh, uniform circular motion all rudiments has been uh, has been discussed the velocity is always acting tangent to the uh, circle the centripetal force is always uh, directed uh, towards center and the, uh, for very small angle delta r over delta t will be equal to uh, the velocity and therefore the velocity will be the change in velocity will be v over r times delta r if you have that case you can use this formula if you are given uh, delta r but if not you can use uh, this formula anyway the uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r and the uh, centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r this is the uh, very famous centripetal uh, force equation mv squared over r and then if we want to get it in terms of uh, time uh, v is equal to the distance over the time but the distance for one of complete revolution is 2 pi r then you will have this formula i guess by now uh, we are ready to uh, solve for uh, problems involving uh, circular motion <laughs>